Hi, everybody. Welcome to our Google Hangout tonight. We are here in the athletic training lab, the live lab here on campus. Euler Nation, Dr. Sue Stevens is with us. We're going to get to her in just a second. Tonight, we are going to go over athletic training and everything related to athletic training. We're going to talk about some different topics tonight, including the program, how athletic training and strength and conditioning are a little bit different, a little bit same. We're going to talk about what to expect starting out in the program. We're going to get into some hands-on in the program, and we're going to answer some questions and hopefully get some live questions as well. And it, to ask us any questions, please, underneath the window in the Google Plus Hangout is a little chat box. Go ahead and ask your questions there. Otherwise, go out to Twitter and tweet in your questions at UFinley and use that hashtag ask. UF. All right. Dr. Sue Stevens, please please introduce her, yourself for everybody. Hi there. Um, I am the program director of our Master of Athletic Training program here at UF, and I have been here for about eight years now, and um, really enjoy the Finley campus and the Finley community. I think we've got a great athletic training program here on campus. Um, it's a little bit different in that it is an entry level master of athletic training, which we're gonna get into with some of your, your questions later on. And um, I look forward to hanging out tonight. Awesome. Let's get right into it. Let's talk athletic training. Can you give us a general overview of the program, let's say starting out as a Starting out as a high school senior, moving into to his college career, and then maybe from a graduate point of view, just an overview of the program. Sure. Um, so when a student decides to, that UF is the place to be and comes in as a college freshman, you want to make sure that when you come in to register that first semester that you let your advisor know that you're interested in athletic training. Um, most of our students take advantage of our three plus two option, where you spend three years as an undergraduate strength and conditioning major. And then during your third year, you apply for the Master of Athletic Training program. Um, so it's important to let us know that ahead of schedule so that we can make sure we've got a nice plan of study because we've got to get four years of college into three years of time. So that's really important so that we can make sure that you stay on track. And you are likely to have that same advisor through the whole five years of your career. Um, we will go ahead and assign you to either myself or our other athletic training faculty um, so that we get to know you a little bit, even as an undergraduate, and so that we can make sure that you get your observation hours done, make sure that you get in the right classes at the right times, and that so you'll be a very, very high quality applicant when it comes time to apply for grad school. Um, so those first three years, you are, uh, like I said, about 90% of our students pursue strength and conditioning, which is a great undergraduate option. Um, and then during that third year, you apply to the AT program. And when you get into the athletic training program, you'll want to make sure that you have a 3.0 in your undergrad career and also some prerequisite courses, which are pretty much all within that strength and conditioning major. So anatomy and physiology, um, some psychology, some, some math, um, some kinesiology, which is the study of human movement, um, exercise physiology, which is how the body responds to exercise, um, nutrition, just some of the foundation, foundational courses that will make you a better athletic trainer on the, on the back end. Um, so you'll work with us to, to, to work your way through those classes. Um, you'll apply in January of that third year, and you will... Um, Usually we try to get decisions out by about the middle of February, so you'll know what's going on. Um, I will tell you, we have a really good success rate with our undergraduate. The three, you know, one of the best things you can do is come here and do your undergraduate here and then roll into the AT program. We have a really good success rate, success rate with our undergrads getting into the graduate program. Um, so then you apply and get accepted. We start in the end of June and it's a two-year graduate program, including both summers. So you'll start in June, you'll take some classes, um, and then start in the fall with your clinical experiences, spending time with our UF athletes, as well as local high school athletes, um, and you'll roll right through, and then also take some classes your second summer in between your two years, and then keep on going as a second-year grad student, 
and graduate in May. And then you're eligible to sit for our board of certification exam um, and then eligible to go out and start looking for a job and starting your career. And doing what you love. And doing what you love. <laughs> Excellent. So the, we have athletic training here on campus, a master's level program. We also have strength and conditioning on this campus. And we might have some students out there that don't know maybe what they want to get into. Okay. Can you go in a little bit of description? Sure. The undergrad strength and conditioning program is actually a really well-recognized and respected program um, in its own right. Um, it does really three different, it can do three different things for you. Uh, one is it's a great program to prepare you for grad school, whether that's in athletic training, whether that's in PT, or whether that's even in exercise science. So we have students graduate from our program and go on in grad school in all three of those areas and are really successful. Um, the other thing it can prepare you to do is to be a personal trainer or own your own gym. We've got graduates that that's their dream is they want to go out and own their own fitness facility, their own fitness club, and they go and they do that. Um, the third sort of piece of strength and conditioning is to become a strength and conditioning specialist or a college, university, or professional sports strength coach. Um, and we have folks doing that at all levels. We have folks in the NFL. We have folks in Major League Baseball, um, the NHL and hockey, uh, big time, like Big Ten Athletics, head strength coach, um, all over the professional ranks, big time college sports ranks, as well as you know, other college and university levels, or even large high schools sometimes will have strength and conditioning programs. Um, so they can go out and do those sorts of things. Um, athletic training, we are a little bit different. We are actually a, a health, our name sounds really similar, but we're actually pretty distinct. Um, an athletic trainer is a healthcare professional, and we provide healthcare services to folks that are physically active. So anything from trying to prevent an injury before it happens, whether that's you know helping you stretch your hamstrings or strengthen up an ankle that maybe you sprained a couple of years ago so you don't re-injure it, whether that's uh, emergency management when an injury, ha a concussion happens during a Friday night football game, or whether that's uh, diagnosing that ACL tear in your knee, um, and then doing referring to appropriate other physicians and things like that and then doing treatment and rehab and you know personally my favorite part of our profession is actually seeing that football player that basketball player uh, or soccer player back out on the court or the field playing their sport that they love and you know knowing that I had at least a little bit of something to do with that so that's sort of the differences between the two um, we find that strength and conditioning works really well for pre-AT students because you learn, I tell students, you learn what happens in a healthy person. So how do you develop strength in a healthy person? How do you develop, how do you motivate a healthy person to, you know, go to the gym three days a week and work out? How do you progress their exercises so they keep getting stronger, things like that? Um, and then in a rehab environment with that ACL patient, well, how do you motivate them, you know, month six when they're kind of down in the dumps about not being able to play their sport? How do you motivate them to keep at it so that they do get that get back on the court? So it really it really is beneficial. Yeah. All right. So as a as an incoming student coming into this program, what what can they expect? Okay, as a incoming grad student, you can expect that um, our emphasis is on hands on learning. You know, how do you learn to athletic training is a very hands on profession. Um, we are out dealing with people and whether that's treatment and designing treatment plans or uh, doing some stretching or managing an injury, whatever, we're always dealing with people and dealing with using our hands. We tell our students the most important piece of equipment that they can have are, the, are really their hands and their brain. Um, so in order to prepare you for that type of a profession, we have to let you practice that. So we do a lot of laboratory activities, which is why we're down here in the AT lab. Um, so whether it's learning how to splint, if you suspect someone broke their leg, how to splint that, or put them on a spine board, or uh, learn how to use ultrasound, or um, how to design a rehab program, or how to do special tests to decide, yep, I think you tore your ACL, or 
yeah, I think maybe that's an ankle sprain or whatever it might be, is you have to use your brain and your hands. Um, so we have that incorporated into pretty much every class in the program. We'll spend some time down here. And um, our sense is that if you can learn and practice it here in this nice controlled setting, then we give you a chance to go out in a clinical rotation and maybe see it out there. You know, I'm not hoping that people start tearing their ACLs up and spraining their ankles, but, you know, they unfortunately they happen. So we give you a chance to hopefully see things out there in the field yeah. and learn how to do them there with your clinical instructor standing over you, um, helping guide you along that way. And we think that really helps because when you graduate and you get out there and everyone looks at you for what are we going to do with this athlete, you've been there, you've done that, and you know exactly what you're doing. So you hit the nail on the head with hands-on because everything behind you is hands-on, um, especially in this lab. Now, specifically, if you can point out a couple of things uh, for us that students can expect to do, in this lab, and if we need to move to the back to look at a few things, we can we can move and go live, and I'll take the camera with me. But um, yeah, starting out, if I'm coming in here day one, and I know I'm going to do some hands-on, what what can I expect to do? Okay, well, some of the first things that we do with our students in that first summer, so literally a day or two after arriving on our campus, some of the first things we work on learning is equipment fitting. So um, we've got some shoulder pads back here. We've got some helmets. So learning how to fit that equipment and then how to remove that equipment. So if someone has a sig severe, significant head injury or we think they might have a neck injury, we have to be able to take that, that equipment off without moving them. So the proper fitting of it, how to use it, how it works, and then even how to remove it in an emergency situation. We got a couple of spine boards. That we, this would be something else you learn that first few days of, of being here, is how to immobilize somebody on here. Again, if we think they have a neck injury or something along those lines. Um, we feel like you learn this first, then you get more time to practice it, and you get more experience with dealing with it, so that you know hopefully you never have to use one of these in real life. Yeah. But if you do, you're going to have some repetition and some experience doing it in here um, to make it just a little bit more comfortable for you. Mm -hmm. um, in our uh, you'll also learn how to use like electrical stimulation and ultrasound ice heat for injury treatment that would be fairly early on in the program as well um, over here is some rehab equipment just to give you a taste um, this is in the probably a little bit farther along in the program but how do you design those exercises and that rehab program to take that injured athlete and get them ready to go back out and start doing their sport again so whether it's developing strength, whether it's, um, you know, foam rolling is a real popular treatment right now for a lot of folks to loosen up muscles and fascia, um, balance, working on, so we have some uneven surfaces to get you used to dealing with uneven even surfaces and your body reacting to things without getting re-injured is real important. So this would be just a couple of examples of some of those types of things. Um, but we do, we really do stress lots and lots of hands-on. Um, because again, we're a hands-on profession and we kind of go with the adage of we teach you it in the classroom, we let you practice it in here on each other so that you get comfortable with the skills, and then we put you into a clinical environment, clinical experience, clinical education, whatever you want to call it, where you actually start doing these things on real live injured athletes and patients. Um, and through that kind of repetition, you learn how to think like an athletic trainer, you learn how to act like an athletic trainer, and by the time you graduate, you'll be, you'll, you'll actually become one. So you'll know what to expect those first few days of work so that if something were to happen, you're ready for it. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Back here and get grounded again. We're going to jump into a couple of questions, a little overview of the program, and, and go from there. Um, I do want to throw out that... We are accepting all of your questions. We will answer them live. We got a little chat box going on below the video, so please go ahead and ask all of your questions there. You can also tweet your questions in at uFinley using that hashtag AskUF. So some of the uh, some of the big questions that are out there 
now so much more that we have, um, you know, you just don't go to college as your next step, but you go to college to actually start working on the foundation of your career. And that leads into a lot of questions of, well, if these programs are getting so sophisticated that they're actually looking for a very specific type of student. So what does the athletic training program look for in a student before they actually walk into the athletic training program? Well, we look for someone with uh, a good, solid foundation in the sciences. So, you know, if you're sitting in high school, not quite sure whether to take that fourth science or not, my suggestion would be to, to go for it. Um, because if there's any chance to take anatomy and physiology in high school, I know a lot of high schools are starting to offer that. That would be a great um, first step because it prepares you because you're going to take anatomy and physiology at least two more times at the undergraduate level and then again in our grad program. So having that basis in high school is really helpful because you some of that will be already in there. You just have to pull it back out. Um, plus that class tends to really help engage you as, as a, yeah, this is really what I want to do. Wow, the human body is really cool. I definitely know I want to do something that involves learning more about the human body. Um, the other thing is a lot of time, high school athletic trainers are always looking for help. So if you have a chance to shadow your high school AT or go to your local rehab clinic and shadow the AT there, that's a great chance because, you know, one is you get to see there's a lot more to our profession than what you might see if you go to your high school football game and just see us standing on the sideline. Um, we do a whole lot more behind the scenes you know, before that game starts, after the game's over, you know, at practice the next morning, things like that, that, that you don't get to see if that's all you, the only time you're around us. So asking that high school AT, you know, hey, can I come in and spend some time with you? Can I pick your brain and ask you lots of good questions about what it's like to be an athletic trainer? What all you do, what your favorite parts of the job are, what are the jobs, parts of the job that you really don't like, but you just kind of have to deal with. All that kind of good stuff is great. Because um, we find that students that have those two keys, they come into our program passionate about becoming an athletic trainer. They, they know what they're getting themselves into, and they're ready for it. They can't wait to get started. Mm -hmm. So those would be probably the two biggest things. So what is something that sets our athletic training program apart from other programs? One of the things that sets us apart is we're a master of athletic training. Um, there are about 29 or 30 other masters of athletic training programs across the country. And uh, we're the only one in the state of Ohio currently. And that really gives us, I think, an advantage. Um, you know, I would never say anything bad about the undergraduate programs in the, in the state because they do a good job. They do, they do some great things, too. But we feel like this master of athletic training program really is the way to go. Um, again, you spend your first three years as a strength and conditioning student learning about that healthy person and how to work with them. And then a lot of those concepts and theories really do apply to an injured person when you get into the graduate program. Um, the other thing I tell my students is their, their undergraduate career does them a lot of good in that they learn those foundational, that foundational knowledge from those prereq classes. They learn how to think. They learn how to speak and communicate, whether it's giving presentations, whether it's how to write a paper. They just learn how to communicate better. They're a little bit more mature, um, which all translates into when they get into the grad program, we can go just a little bit deeper into the, into the profession and the skills and the knowledge, and we can cover things that we wouldn't have time. If we had to spend a lot of time going over basic anatomy and physiology, then we wouldn't have time to delve deeper into a knee injury, or we wouldn't have time to discuss maybe a slightly less common injury, um, and now we can. Mm -hmm. So athletic training, usually you think sports immediately, and a lot of questions that we, we get for a lot of the other programs on campus is, can I, can I play a sport? Can I be an athlete and also do this major as well. Can we do that? We can. And all very clearly, yes, you can do that. Um, because I get asked that question a lot. And I'll answer it and then the student will come back and say, Well, Sue said I couldn't play soccer. And I'm like, No, I didn't. You can. It, very clearly you can. Um that's that's really one of the things that being at the master's level really helps us with. Yeah. Um 
because it's really hard if you're a soccer player to be at football practice because they both practice at 2.30, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, but since we're at the master's degree level, you've got that first three years that you can be a soccer player. And there are little constraints on your time as far as athletic training goes. You know, we, we want you to go and we want you to do that. And by the time you get to your, if you remember, we talked about a three plus two. Well, that fourth year, sort of your, your fourth year, of, you can still play soccer because what we can do is we know that you're going to have a whole second year that we will be your priority as far as your clinical rotations. So instead of making you go to football practice during that, your fourth year of being a soccer player, we'll send you somewhere else that is a little more flexible around soccer practice and soccer games. And we will work with you and your sport coach to identify what days and times are really critical for you to be at soccer practice and what days and times are maybe not quite so critical for you to be a soccer practice. And then we can work your athletic training around that. Um, because we know we're going to have you for the next uh, three semesters where we'll be, we will be your top priority. Um, and that's one thing that's been great here at UF is the, the coaching staff works with us really well to let our student athletes be in this major. Um, we have had, you know, I use soccer as an example. We've had a soccer player. We've had a basketball player. We've had, a, we've even had a football player. And I tell folks, if we can make this work for a football player to be on the football team and an athletic training student, then we can make it work with any sport out there. Um, we've had swimmers, we've had softball and pretty much almost every sport on campus. Um, we even had someone who was in the marching band one year, uh, and we were able to tailor his clinical experiences so he could continue to perform. Um, so we really try to be as flexible as we can with that. Uh, and that's really important, honestly, because one, if you have the talent and the ability to be a college athlete, then I definitely think you should. I worked in college athletics for 14 years before I started teaching full time. It's a great experience. And if you have that opportunity, go for it. Um, the other thing is we get a lot when I used to teach in an undergraduate program where we didn't allow you to do that, we ended up turning away folks that I think would have been really amazing athletic trainers. Because if you're a high school and, and a, or a college athlete, you've had the bumps and the bruises, you've sprained your ankle, you know exactly what those athletes are going through um, that you're now taking care of as an athletic trainer. And I think that really makes a strong AT. So we try and do whatever we can to make that work. Awesome. We do have a question that came out uh, from Darcy. Darcy would like to know, you mentioned the undergraduate study of the strengthening classes for three years before going into athletic training. Is that also hands-on? Yes. Our, um, one thing you'll hear, is, uh, no matter pretty much who you talk to at UF, is all of our programs here have a strong hands-on clinical experience, and kind of whatever you want to call it, experiential learning, internships, whatever. Um, all of our programs pretty much here on campus have some sort of experience there. Um, the strength and conditioning program has three different, they call them practicum courses, and um, they are each about 100 hours long. The first one is in facilities management. So it's kind of the behind the scenes aspect of working in the fitness industry. So working with memberships, working with uh, you know, inspecting equipment in a gym, um, all of those sorts of behind the scenes logistical business side of things. Uh, the second one is in practicum in personal training where you work with a certified personal trainer with their clients and you actually are designing the exercise programs, uh, implementing them with your client, motivating your client, uh, progressing them as they get stronger. So working with your own, sort of your own client load. And then the third one is actually in strength and conditioning. And it's primarily done in our university varsity weight room with our strength and conditioning staff. So you learn how to work with a team. So how does the basket, what does the basketball team do on a daily basis to get stronger and more flexible and more powerful and quicker uh, to be able to translate that into better performance on the court? So Darcy talk, talked about hands-on. There's one thing that we didn't we didn't mention that the athletic training students do. And they go actually, it's right next door here, the cadaver lab. They do. It's actually one of their favorite classes. Um, it's probably the hardest. I, I tell it's the hardest two classes in our entire program, and it's also their favorite two classes. 
Um, we have a two semester cadaver gross anatomy program and we get about four or five students per cadaver and the students do all the dissection work and um, they spend a year a fall and a spring semester with their donor and um, it's really a cool aspect of our program not all AT programs have access to a cadaver lab um, UF is really kind of um, unique in that way because you don't find too many small private schools that have a cadaver lab and uh, it's a great it's a great experience for the students. Uh, I benefit from it because I teach our orthopedic evaluation series, which runs the same semesters as that cadaver anatomy. And it's great because if we're talking about knee injuries in class, I know that about a week or two before I'm talking about it, they just dissected the knee over there. So I can bring that in and say, hey, you know, when you dissected the knee, do you remember seeing this tissue or do you remember the line that the quad muscles, how they came into the knee, and the students all like, oh yeah, I remember seeing that. And so it really makes our lectures much more uh, engaging mm -hmm. and interesting. So I think they learn a lot from that opportunity. Yeah, it's it's really going beyond that textbook and actually getting in and actually seeing, not a live, but a live, you know, leg, yeah. muscle, everything. Yeah, because it's, yeah. it's so much different than uh, just looking at, you know, looking at pictures or looking in your book at what it looks like. You actually can, can feel it and really get a three-dimensional look at what those tissues look like. So it just, oh, yeah, well, that's why when you move your knee like this, this is what happens. I can definitely see how that puts you stress and strain on that ligament or whatever it may be. So one of the questions we get with different uh, different programs are the you know outside the classroom, and we hit on yes, you can you can be a student athlete and get in this major as well. Um, are students involved outside the classroom as far as like student organizations? Um, student organizations, they do. We have an athletic training student organization that our graduate students primarily participate in. Um, but that's kind of another, you know, there's lots of really good educational reasons and experience reasons to have a master's degree. There's also a lot of really nice side benefits, you know, being able to be an athlete. We have students that are in fraternities and sororities. We have students, like I said, we had a student that marched in the oiler brass. Um, they do pretty much everything that other AT students do, especially in those first three years. And what's nice is once you get used to doing it in those first three years, and if that organization is something that's really, really important to you, you find the time to do it during grad school. You know, you may have to pick and choose what the most important ones are for you, but you still find and make the time to do it. Mm -hmm. And in fact, some of our grad students that come just for grad school um, find that some of the campus organizations are really important. One of them played in one of the bands for one of our uh, religious life groups. So they do their the Sunday church service on Sunday evenings, and he played in the band um, because that was really important to him. So he was able yeah. to make time in his schedule to do those sorts of things. Yeah, having that flexibility there, it's, that's key. So one of the last questions that I have here is uh, the type of career that I can get with an athletic training degree. And you know, a lot of different majors, you might not know your exit strategy once you get out and where you're going to go. And maybe there's a whole field out there that they're not sure of. But, you know, when you say athletic training, you kind of have a general idea. But what are some of the other careers that an athletic trainer can go into? Okay. Uh, most of our students, they come here, again, it's a graduate program. So they come here knowing that they want to become an athletic trainer. Uh, but what an athletic trainer means to different people is a little bit different. Um, I was a college and university athletic trainer, like I said, for about 14 years before I moved into being a college professor. So those are two settings that you can work in. Um, about 60% of high schools across the U.S. have an athletic trainer in their high school. So you can work in, a high, in high school athletics, you can work in college and university athletics, you can work about 2 or 3% of ATs work in the college sports ranks. Um, you can work in an outpatient rehab clinic. So if you like doing rehabilitation during the day, um, you can become a physician extender, which we have actually two of our alums doing that, where they work in a physician's office during the day. So they take you back to the room, they um, do an evaluation on you, um, take your medical history, your vital signs, and then they go out and they confer with your, your doctor. And then the doctor comes in, does his or her evaluation and says, oh, yep, I think, you know, maybe Gal orders x-rays or whatever, says, oh, yep, no, nope, I don't think it's broken. I think it's just an ankle sprain. 
Um, going to have the athletic trainer come back in, fit you for your brace, and give you some home exercise program to do, and then come back and see me in a couple of weeks. And then in the afternoon, they may go out to a local high school and be that high school athletic trainer. Um, those are sort of the big traditional settings for athletic training, but there are also some others. You know, you always think of sports when you think of athletic training. But I always tell people they need to expand what and who an athlete is. Um, the military, I mean, talk about people that are physically active. They don't get much more physically active than that. Um, the Navy SEALs employ athletic trainers to take care of them. Um, the Marines in boot camp, they have uh, athletic trainers at all of their boot camp uh, bases. And they go out and cover PT, their physical training, cover their hand-to-hand -hand combat training to make sure that injuries don't happen or treat them when they do. Um, police and fire academy is kind of in that military vein of things as well. We'll hire athletic trainers. Um, also performance. Again, you think of a dance, a, a dancer or um, the Cirque du Soleil, the, you know, the circus acts in Vegas with yeah. the high aerial. They don't rehearse or perform without at least one athletic trainer on site. Um, so there's lots of different types of settings where that you might not think of that you can pursue as an athletic trainer. And I'll tell you, we have alums in pretty much all of them. So we have, uh, you know, I discussed college, university, high school, clinic, the physician extenders. We have alums that work, uh, one works for the Navy and one works for the Army as a civilian at um, the field bases. We have uh, alums that have done all sorts of different types of industrial things and also uh, just really kind of all over the spectrum as far as different settings. Excellent. Excellent. Um, for everyone watching, you can keep your questions coming in. We'll keep track of Twitter. You can go out to uh, Twitter, ask your questions there. Use the hashtag AskUF, and we can follow up with you afterwards. So that's all I have at this point. And from the Athletic Training Lab, uh, we will talk to everyone real soon. If you have more questions, please get a hold of your admissions counselor or contact the athletic training office directly and we will help you out. So from Oiler Nation, we'll talk to you guys later.